Welcome everybody to Pinoy Bounds. Kumusta kayo lahat? This is the basketball show for the Filipino community where we talk basketball and just uh, basketball in general. Right now, I am, I'm here with my co-host, Marky Mark. We're floating TVs right now. He's there with the scarf because it's actually cold in Canada. And we have a special guest all the way from Chicago. It's John Francia from Bata Soul. John, thank you for being here. Glad to be here, guys. Thank you so for having me. Thank you, thank you. We'd like to start the show off by talking about what's happening currently in the NBA. I know there's a lot of COVID and missed games, but let's talk about some topics that are near and dear to our to our hearts. And that is first, the big blockbuster trade that just happened that shook the league. Let's talk about James Harden. So let's let's throw it to John first. What do you think <laughs> about James Harden going to the Nets? Is it a good fit? Or um, should he be should it should he probably went somewhere else? What do you think? I think uh, it's a very interesting situation across the board. I think, uh, you know, you see everyone seeing the memes, uh, everyone's seeing uh, chubby, chubby James Harden. Um, Kyrie Irving's been missing for who knows how many games. Trip so, club straight. Trip club James Harden. <laughs> just flying back and forth, being rebellious, throwing parties. Like, it's just, it's across the board. It doesn't seem professional. And, you know, yeah, knowing how KD could be too on, like, all the stuff, his secret Twitter account. Like, it's just going to be very interesting for the Nets. Um, I personally uh, had a few Houston friends who were confused about their team, what's going to happen with James Harden this year. And in all honesty, I think I, they got the better end of the, the trade. I think they got a team to build upon. I think I'm excited for their future draft picks, knowing that they're going to have, I think, like how many first round picks, like more than four. So it's like, you know, it, overall, it's interesting. Uh, I don't know how India kind of or Indiana really fit into this whole trade situation. I don't know how the bird's going to do over there, but um you know, Nets got it coming from. Uh, I'm a big fan of Steve Nash. I uh, actually saw him playing soccer in the middle of the streets in New York not that long ago. Mm. Uh, and so, you know, I love him to death. But with him and D'Antoni, I'm very curious what they're going to do with that team. But in the end, they could surprise us. Who knows, you know? Exactly, exactly. You make good points. Rockets actually got a lot of lot, lot of assets from that deal. And you never know, they might rock it up into the standings, right? Now, Mark, what do you think about James Harden fit in, fitting in to the Nets system? What do you think about, you know, the players and, spe- and specifically how will they mesh? Oh, man. Um, what I like about this season is that there was so much drama. And uh, I mean, this was already started mm-hmm. way before the season started for the Rockets with James Harden not even showing up in training camp, wondering where he is. And he, he wasn't, you know, and then there was a recent interview right at their loss against the, uh, the, the Lakers where he literally just threw everyone under the bus and say, this team is awful. This team sucks. We can't win with this team. I don't even know um, why we had this, you know, built up. We can't make this any better. And literally, you know, John Wall and, and DeMarcus is just like, had to really, um, had to cover for him in terms of the stuff, the stuff that he said and, and how to act professionally. So, but the good thing is that um, with DeMarcus, you know, you, he's been through this. So he's been through a situation where he wanted out of, uh, and he was a franchise player and he had to uh, leave his own franchise with the Kings. So he, he's matured a little bit in the situation and his reason to come to play to Houston wasn't to, for James Harden, but it was for, John Wall because they were our teammates back in college. So mm-hmm. I think Houston is in a really good position right now. They have a player in Victor Oladipo. He's a, I think he's a much better fit with uh, John Wall and Christian Wood. It's just been a blessing in disguise. Like what a steal for for Houston Rockets to replace uh, to replace Clint Capella. But on the the net side, I mean, think about this kind of this is like a Cinderella story. You got James Harden that was reunited with Westbrook in Houston. And then now you got James Harden reunited with Kevin Durant in the Nets. We got to figure out if they're going to have the same results where the Houston Rockets did not fail at all. And you had to break that whole team up with Westbrook having to go to Washington. Or this could be a, you know, a, a feel good story where they figured, finally figured out that these guys are actually a, a match in, in making heaven in terms of how Durant plays. Um, the beauty of Durant's game is that you can play him off the ball and it'd still be so effective. But the only big issue I have is that now you're bringing in two guys, two superstars with big ego, and they bring drama to them every single time. And that's Kyrie and, and Harden. I don't know if they're going to cause a lot of riff in this team. And you got a new coach here in Steve Nash. I don't know how he's going to handle it, but I'm a big fan of Steve Nash as well. I want to see how this goes. This is a championship or bust. This is what they're doing. It's the same move that the, the Nets did when they, tra- when they traded for uh, Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett. And they had James Johnson and, and James Johnson, Joe Johnson and Darren Williams. So this was 
what they did exactly when they were uh, just so this could either ruin their whole future for the next five years or this could make them uh, a perennial championship. Mm-hmm. All right, let's switch on to the next topic talking about perennial champions. Now, I want to ask the Chicago local do you see your team as being a, per, a championship contending team to the playoffs or where would you say is the development of the Chicago Bulls right now? I just want to make it to the playoffs. Uh, I'll be real with you. It's been some tough, tough years. Um, you know, it wasn't since Derrick Rose, uh, since like the Chicago teams and Chicago Bulls were actually like, hey, we're going to watch it every time during the post, um, you know, the post games and everything. And so uh it, we obviously are at this point where things are changing. We took out our front office. Uh, every every Chicagoan hated Garpex. Um, they really did a lot of injustice um, to the team, and it's pretty vocal across the board. AK, uh, you know, with what he did with Denver, with how Jokic and Jamal Murray really came together and where they're currently at, you know, two years down the line, three years down the line, I would love to see Chicago there. Um, I think we need to really figure out how we're going to manage Zach Levine and his expectations. Everyone across the league has been saying how he's going to be the next superstar. He is, and he's a huge superstar currently. He's the one that's killing it for the team. I do love how we uh, almost beat the the Lakers and we almost beat the Clippers. I wanted to beat the uh, the Lakers and the Clippers, but I'll take that for what was things last year. Um, you know, I love Cody White. I think he is a very dynamic point guard. Um, I'm curious what his growth is going to be, just because you know he, he's uh, a very different point guard than what I currently see within the league. Uh, and, uh, Mark, I know you have, uh, Patrick Williams on your fantasy team, uh, you know, very interesting pick, uh, you know, his ceiling is Kawhi Leonard, but is he going to hit that ceiling? That's the question I want to see, uh, as a Chicagoan, I think like, you know, basketball is in my soul growing up in the nineties, uh, you know, every time the, they were in the playoffs, the family was together, you know, we, we barbecued, we, we played Mahjong, we did all this. And it was all through those, those game series against, uh, the jazz and, um, you know, every single time during that, then that was my earliest memories with basketball. Uh, and so um, you know, I want to get back there knowing that, you know, I am my dad's age when I was watching those games with them. It's very interesting. So it's like, you know, I want the Bulls to be back on top. And, you know, with all the things, learning a lot more into it with the last dance series during COVID, like it's, it's, you know, we got to get our time to shine again, you know. Mm-hmm. Mark, is there any, any, any uh, thing that you noticed from Chicago, the team in general, or is there a player that you really like? Uh, I'm curious, actually, on your thoughts on how their makeup right right now in their uh, in the front court is it's quite dynamic mm-hmm. having Kobe White and and um, Zach Levine, and they have a promising uh, small forward with Patrick Williams as the rookie, and I think he's a really good fit for that. And you know, the more he continues to develop that all around game, the more he can really be that kind of glue guy that they need. Um, I'm curious in terms of what your thoughts in their big mans with uh, Wendell Carter and and Markinen. So. Uh, I don't know if they need to to load up on that or uh, or marketing needs to make that jump or have we hit a ceiling when he had his rookie year? I, I'm curious because I had I was big on him. I don't know how much more can you give. Yeah, yeah. So this is his year to get his contract, right? Uh, one of the big question marks going into this league is like, are we going to give him an extension? Uh, what is the money value of marketing? Can we just keep him on just knowing that he had that great first season? Uh, had that dip that second season and now like you know what is his value to the Bulls I trust AK I trust their negotiation skills I hope he treats these players well so that's not um you know you know there was not a lot of trust as a fan for Gar Pax because we always thought he didn't treat Derrick Rose right um we didn't think he t- treated many of the players on Chicago Bulls pretty right in terms of just like uh trading them or like getting them to where they want so um I still think it's this year for him to prove it. I think with Wendell Carter kind of being that consistent double-double uh, kind of center, it gives Markinen that freedom that he didn't have with Jim Boylan. Um, Jim Boylan wanted him to be a shooter. I think Markinen could show what he is now. And so um, this is his year. Uh, I think uh, it's either he shows it and then he makes it um, as a bull starter moving on, or he doesn't show it and then he gets traded around and ultimately tries to find his way as a, a power forward center in the league. So that's my thoughts on that. All right. Uh, we we have run out of time talking about these topics. I know uh, it's fun to talking to a Chicago local about his thoughts about their team. When we come back, we're actually going to we're actually going to go one on one. Mark's going to talk about fantasy. And I actually have some clips to share with you that are funny and also some. Oh, my God, plays when we come back. Mm-hmm.